to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, for he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. People, God is calling you today to turn from your sinful ways. Dude, as someone who's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't behave that way because I'm, behave what way? I'm afraid of God, and I stand up for God. Christ and gay. Sitting here and like behaving the way you are. How am I behaving? You're proclaiming the word of God. Am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? No, you're God, God, God you're sucks. Judging God people. sucks. Peter, who have, how have I judged you? God's word is what judges you. Because you expect that people who you walk past like, I'll, make I'll you upset, and that's what actually I'll makes me God. sad. It says, uh, it says that I'm upset because of the sin that abounds. That's biblical. I have every right to be upset. God is angry with the wicked every day. Uh, and you say it's wrong to judge, but you're judging me in that very statement. But you, 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 well, yeah, you, you, you are, you are stupid. You're, you're retarded. Okay, according to you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I worry about God's opinion, not yours. No, it says, fear not man who can kill the body, but after that can do nothing more. But I forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him who after he has killed has the power to cast both body and soul into hell. So I'm not afraid of you, young man. I'm afraid of God. Hey, hey it's all right. That hard heart that gets in there. What's it getting in there from? It's from too many drugs. It's from too much sex outside of marriage. It's from too much exposure to wickedness, too much pornography, too much rap, too many parties. And then your conscience ends up getting seared, and your heart, it ends up getting hardened. So the guy, he's got to break it. He's got to give you a new heart. So your old heart, your old passions, the things that are inside your flesh, they need to be taken out. Put your number in there. Are hey, you a Christian man? Most definitely. You going to the show? Yeah, little brother. They always talk about Christ. They, they, they like that. Yeah, I used to listen to them, man. This is not little godly brother. music. Little brother? Yeah, I used to listen to Fonte? Little Brother. Yeah, I had their albums. I had Fonte's solo albums. I was into all this stuff at one point. So you're saying Fonte ain't right? Man, these people don't glorify Jesus Christ. They're not glorifying Jesus you Christ. You said word to Yahweh. They're glorifying their father death, but they curse. They take God's name in vain. That's not glorifying God, man. Here, I'll give you my cards, my email in the back. If you're serious, email me, and we can talk, all right? But you need to follow Jesus Christ. Okay, dog. He wouldn't That's lead you into saying. this place where That's people are... But look at the way these women are dressed in here. I, I, I ain't been to a concert my whole life with this dude Fonte and Lou. I'm like, they, they the truth. I mean, like, I believe they what they believe. Jesus Christ, man. You need to examine their lyrics a little closer. You need to examine what this lifestyle promotes. Drunkenness, partying, reveling. Women dress half naked. People in no, here trying to sleep with... That's not what they promote. That's not what they But promote. that's what's going on in this. And they and they, they walking with the wicked. But, but they don't promote that, Yeah, though. but they're walking with the wicked. Are they are they having a show that, that says no alcohol being served? They're having a, a show with a dress code saying dress modestly, women. They're not doing that. They ain't talking about... This is making them money. And and yeah, well, I understand. They may not be as bad as certain artists. Artists. They may be, you know, a different strain of it, but it still doesn't glorify God. And a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump, the Bible says. Just a little bit of sin is all it takes, man. God bless you, brother. Look, I care, I care about you to tell you the truth. People don't walk with the wicked. The Bible says to be set apart, to be holy. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. So if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. God wants you to be set apart. God wants you to be to be a, a, a holy and right part of a holy and righteous nation. People, I'm here today to tell you this because I love God. I have no confidence in the flesh. I just put confidence in God's word. God's word is sure and righteous. You can trust in God only because he's the only true and faithful witness. Jesus Christ. John 1, 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It says, He was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. It says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the light, in him, and the life of men. See, the light shined in darkness. See, but the darkness comprehended it not. No people that didn't comprehend the light. You see, because the Bible says there's a separation between darkness and light. The darkness doesn't comprehend the light. 
See, in him there's no shadow of turning. There's no variation. Since God is the constant, his word, his laws, his precepts, his commandments, his love, his truth, his mercy. See, it all endures forever. Praise the Lord. See, with this darkness of sin, this darkness that we go into when we go our own way, we fall into darkness. See, it's the influence of the devil, the prince of the power of the air, the ruler of the darkness of this world, spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. See, this is the battle we face today. We're wrestling against, against these sins and these dark arts of the devil. See, he uses all these things in your life. Things like rap music, things like the internet, things like entertainment. See, these things are being used by the devil to, to draw all of you young people away into covetousness, idolatry, and into worldliness, and into lust. You see, these are tools that God gives you to use for good, but, but you turn them into corruptible things. You're using these tools for the wrong things when you don't have God. You're using them to draw you into darkness. You see, because the darkness is separate from the light. Now, if you're in darkness today, I got good news for you. You see, because there's a light that shines to those that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. See, there's a light that shines even brighter unto that perfect day. Yes, people, it says in Proverbs 4, 18 through 19, it says, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is, is, is darkness, and they know now at what they stumble. I know that a lot of you, you're stumbling in your sin, and you don't even know why. You don't know why you're so depressed and that you feel so hopeless. You don't know why you have no power. Well, it's because you don't have glory in your life because you don't have the good pleasures of God in your life. You're aimless going around in your life. You see, because that's because you don't got Jesus Christ. See, because when you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have life. See, right now you don't know the one that gives you life. You see, the Bible says Jesus is the life. It says there's no other life beside Jesus. And without him, you've got no life. The Bible says in John 3, 36, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. Even the wrath of God. The anger of God, the punishment of God. It's upon the children of disobedience. Disobedient, that's what you are when you reject Jesus Christ. You're a child of wrath, even as the others, like it says in Ephesians 2 and 3. Can you imagine if everyone was preaching everyone? Do you not know, people, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? It says, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and the fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. See, he that despised Moses' law, he died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much worse a punishment do you suppose shall the man be who thought worthy, who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and accounted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite the spirit of grace. See, when you sin willfully and you go on continuing to sin, ignoring the conviction of the Holy Spirit, when he whispers in your ear and he says, turn from your sin, he says, turn to me. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28, come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest to your soul. The Bible says they wouldn't do it. Isaiah 30, 15, it says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning in rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence now shall be your strength. And you would not. See, they didn't want rest. They didn't want to return to God. They would not, it said. So what do you have? You have distress. You got any? Driver. I, I, I came back from the dead. I was dead in my sins. I was dead in my sins and through Jesus Christ I have life. Do you think Jesus, do you think Jesus is a white male with a beard? No, I don't. 
But what does that matter? His blood was red, your blood is red, he died for you and me. Just the same. People, the, the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Every, fruit, every tree that brings not forth good food is hewed down and cast into the fire. It says in verse 11 and 12, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than me, whose shoes which I'm not worthy to bear. People, the fire of God burning in your heart. The Holy Spirit, no longer evil spirits, no longer satanic spirits. See, but the Holy Spirit, he comes in, it says in Matthew 3, 3, 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. See, when Jesus comes to test your heart, Jude 1, 13, it says, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shade, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness and darkness of darkness forever. Job 20, verse 24 through 26, it says, He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and comes out of the body. Yes, the glittering sword, it comes out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown will consume him. It will go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. So that's what's going to happen to you if you stay in your current state of sin when Jesus Christ returns. <laughs> you see, the fire comes to test you because Jesus said that everyone's going to be tested with fire. Do you have the gold or do you have the precious rubies of wisdom, which is more precious than gold? People, wisdom is what you need. Proverbs 24, 3 through 6 says, it says, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it's established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So the wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases in strength. For by wise counsel you shall make your war, and in multitude of counsels. You made me lose my ticket. Hey, that's a good thing. You you should you should end up taking that like a sign. Maybe God doesn't want you to go in here. Well, I plead to you, just admit that you're not right with Jesus Christ. You need to understand that you're an enemy of God. You're fighting against God, and in the end, you're going to end up losing the battle. See, but God, He can accept you onto His side. Only if you surrender, though. You need to stop being selfish, and you need to respond to God's love. See, right now, you want the glory. You see, but Christ, He's the one that should be getting the glory. Not you or me. Not these men that you worship. Not these women that you worship through your idolatry. Yes, honey, yes. It says that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. It says God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. If you support sin, if you support gay pride, then people, you're opposing what is God's law. says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness what you got man, the man in first john 8 what well, it wasn't cleansed yet that happens in verse 9 but it says in first john 2 and 4 he that says i know him and doesn't keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him To seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he's near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon 
The scripture says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter turn into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he will lift you up. Ooh, that's what you need. You need to humble yourself. You need humility. You need to get right with God and forsake your sin. Because the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge. The Bible says by the fear of God one departs from evil. Because if you feared God, you wouldn't go into these filthy concerts. If you feared God, you wouldn't be out here drinking and lusting to this demonic music. See, the people that go to these concerts, they, they treat these men in here, these musicians, like they're their God. They memorize all their filthy lyrics. They download their albums. You see, but you can't even quote one Bible verse. But I tell you, God's word is more important than any musician or concert or show. It's more important than impressing your friends. Live with the Bible. You're going to be judged by the Bible. You need to live by the Bible, not by this worldliness. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and to the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. The word of God is profitable for doctrine, for instruction, for correction. See, but most people these days, they don't like correction. See, but God, he wants to correct you of your sin. He wants to redirect you and drive you to the cross of Calvary where you can find mercy for your sin, where you can find cleansing and pardoning of your sin. People, this is God's love for you. See, but most of you, you're just going to go on in your old ways. You're going to reject the mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, given by Jesus Christ, given by his sacrifice on the cross. See, God wants to deliver you from the kingdom of darkness and translate you to the kingdom of his dear son. And you'll be on redemption and forgiveness of sins through his shed blood. You're going to have forgiveness, people. But now is the time to get right with God because you don't know when you're going to take your last breath. So once you die, that's going to be it. You're not going to be able to ask God to forgive you at that point. It'll be too late. See, if you die in your sins, there's only one place you're going to end up. It's eternal torment, which is described as the second death. Where the Bible says, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And them that do iniquity, and he shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Where? Where? Hell, hell fire. Hell fire. When you die in your sin. If I tell you these things because God commands me to, but I, but I also care about you. And, and the true definition of love, according to the Bible, is wanting the greatest good for them. People, I don't want to see you die in your sins and end up in hell. Maybe you need to really think about this. It's the most important decision that you would ever make in your life. <laughs> you know, the Bible says it's appointed to man once to die. Then after this, the judgment. See, God is a just judge that you're going to have to face one day. There's no slick lawyer that's going to get you off in God's courtroom. There's no corrupt court system that's going to pardon you. You're going to need to plead your case in front of God. What is the profit if you get all that and you end up burning in hell for all eternity? Hey, it's not love if I don't tell you the truth. The truth is you will die in your sin. And you won't take any of that with you. You won't have sex in hell when you're burning on fire. You won't be smoking in hell. Yeah, but you need to have sex inside of marriage. The, God, the way that God made it. Not with every stranger. Not so that you could be broken hearted and get all kind of diseases and die in your sin. Look at me! <laughs> but God came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. 1 John 3 8. It says, Let us can hear the conclusion of the whole matter. You have a question? Yeah, well, I, I wanted to offer some scripture for consideration. Is that all right? Um, 
Have you ever read the scripture where Jesus said, don't cast your pearls upon swine lest they trample them underfoot? I, I've been working through that personally. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm just saying like some things I've been considering myself lately. I'm, I'm a follower of Christ. I truly believe. That being said, like, I have a hard time facing discouragement myself when like I put myself in a position to be trying to preach to people who are in the space to, you know, receive it. And so for me, like the most helpful thing in those cases, like like when I walk down the street, like I see I see all this clubbing and stuff, you know, and like it's So do like, you think these people are swine? Is that what you're saying? That they're not worthy? No, that's not what I said. No, I said, I'm talking about swine in correlation to the story of Christ casting demons out into the swine. It's talking about how Jesus isn't going to prefer to give demons a place to, to roost, you know, but like they're going to go somewhere. So he, it's just a, a metaphor carried along. In Bible. So, so what, what is your, what is your absolute point that you're trying to convey to me right now? My point is that like, from my personal experience as a Christian, uh, I've had a lot more headway seeing real like personal like changes in people's lives by like praying for them you know even even as I'm walking by a club and stuff like praying for people and not like like leading with the judgment aspect I'm not saying that judgment isn't real well the Bible teaches us to do it this way so it's great that you want to pray for people the Bible tells us to reprove rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine it says that this is the way, this is the example we see, the disciples, the apostles doing it in the Bible. They were killed for doing it this way. I'm, 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 my, my objective is to please God and to do what God has commanded me to do. The Great Commission is to go into the world and preach the gospel, not go into the world and pray for the people. It says go into the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. It says cry aloud, also spare not, here. lift yeah. up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and their sins. It says go into the highways and byways ways and compel them to come in so I, I don't take any liberties or I don't take any kind of any kind of uh, uh, d any kind of direction differently uh, that goes against what that says now, I'm not saying it's wrong to preach to, to pray for people or to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people but I'm here to lift up my voice like a trumpet and to do what the God what the Bible commands in God's Word so for you to I condemn know, this way I'm you're, you're going it. against God I'm not it seems to me you that just, you have you a just problem. Condemned. You, you're being very hypocritical no I'm not you call me I well, you will know them by their fruits. I didn't condemn what you were saying. You know? you're, you're telling me that I'm doing what I'm doing is no, wrong. No, I, I you're telling me what I'm doing and is and then wrong. you tried to twist it. I didn't as try if to I twist it. I was trying anything. to like make something into something else. I asked you if that's what you meant by it. Well, with an implication. So can okay. I ask in response, like, what do you think that scripture meant? If not, what I was doesn't mean it, does, it does. To. It doesn't mean that. Can you tell that, me what you think it means? What, the, to not cash your, your pearls. Uh, Did you think it literally meant don't talk to a pig? No, I don't mean it. I don't think it then literally think meant, meant that. I don't think it means what you think it means. That that I'm not supposed to. That, that I'm not supposed to keep preaching to people I didn't say that don't want to receive people. me. It doesn't. I never said that. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that. Well, though. Jesus said when people don't receive you, he said uh, leave yeah. that place like and like kick the dust off your feet. And okay. I'm not. You're not in that position. Okay. People aren't telling you. After like, get after out you're of done though. After you're done. After with you're what? done. After you're done with what you're doing there. Once you leave, then to shake the dust off your feet. Not to shake your dust off your feet because they don't receive you. It's after you leave if they haven't received you then you shake the dust that's, off your feet that's the point i mean but it, but, but it doesn't just, mean in the middle like of exactly no saying. you're you're trying to imply that it means in the middle of the fact that they're not receiving me when you don't know that there's people walking up and down the street that could be receiving me so I you don't know i didn't that. imply that no one's receiving so you're taking scripture out of context so if you want to go on in your humanistic ways of thinking that 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 telling people that they're right now. that i'm being what very assumptive. And I'm not my being assumptive. About the people here. I'm not being assumptive. You've you've revealed your heart to me through through what you've told me. So I, I understand you don't think this is right, but I'm gonna keep doing it the way that God told me to do it. I didn't tell you that it was. Can you can I have to explain something very clearly? Look, I, 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 you're 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 with you're 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 keeping me from preaching right now, and that's what I'm calling. No, to you're you're so like not, turning away from someone with a believing heart trying to preach to you, dude. Like that's that's very like very insincere. Okay, well, you know, like you're, if you're, you think I'm someone that's missing something, and I'm not refusing you, look, then I'm, you should be yeah, preaching to me. Like I'm, I'm talking I'm, to you. I already right now. told you. I already gave you uh, the, the biblical side of it. So at this point, I'm ready to start preaching. Okay. So 
you have a, you have a good day. You. you have a good day, sir. We're done. That's not the gospel. According to you. No, that's according not the gospel. You. According to the gospel. I will read scripture and I will collaborate okay. and dialogue with you, but you I'm, won't. I'm, I'm, sir, I'm here to preach. You're using I'm, I'm here to preach. the megaphone. I'm here to preach. I'm done. I already, I already told you I'm done with you. Where's your love? You're done with Where's your love? I'm Where's done with this love? conversation, sir. You're trying to withhold the, the word from going out. You've already revealed to me that I'm not that, trying that, to withhold the word. You don't, you I'm don't, talking about how you can best use the energy to preach the word. Okay. Like you, you, you're, you're not giving me scripture to back that up, sir. I did, and you no. didn't respond. You no. didn't tell you me didn't, your interpretation. You, of didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give me any I scripture. Did. You didn't give me any scripture that proved yeah, that. I, I told did. you I don't agree with that. That I gave you two pieces of it. scripture. I talked about the sandals okay. and I talked about okay. the swine. Well, you I gave didn't respond either. I gave you four scriptures, and you didn't respond to either one of those. I did. No, you didn't. I said go in the byways and preach. And well, that's what I'm doing. So why are you trying to keep me from doing that? If you're a true Christian, I'm not don't you want souls to be saved? You're making a lot of Don't you want souls to be saved? I do. And okay. I, and I, well, then let, let me preach, sir. I've let expressed. me preach. preach. I'm going to preach. Okay? I'm going to preach. So you're going to just like dislodge this conversation yes. about the word. Yes, because you, we're going to circles. We're going to circles. No, you you haven't responded to what I said. You haven't you're responded to circle. me. You, you haven't responded to me Yes, either. I have. I was in the middle of it when you cut me off with your megaphone. Because I told Where's you we're love. Uh, this is love, telling people the truth. If you don't want to receive it, that's on you. Go go, go uh, talk to God about it. Reflect on it. Go search the scriptures. But again, I'm here called to preach, not to have a, uh, to a continuous not roundabout a circle. About the word. I'm here to preach, sir. He called me to preach. Then why didn't you respond to what I said? That's not I already, did. I already did. I already did. You didn't respond we're, to we're, what we're I asked. I asked a have a nice question. day, sir. God bless you. You're still not responding to me. God bless That's you. not love. <laughs> People, God commands you to repent and trust in Jesus Christ to wash you clean. You need to start living for Jesus Christ. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Is that what you're about to do, sir? Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. You're a hypocrite. See, but you can trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that all things were created through Jesus. It says that nothing was created apart from him. You need to turn to him that you might be made a vessel of honor for his use. You think Jesus is your God? What's that? He's a guy. A guy. A guy that he's a man. A man. Yes, he is. You think he's a white man. No, I already told you that he's not. Why? What do you think he is? Because he's a he's a uh, Israelite. He's a, he's a Hebrew. He's, he's a God in the flesh. He's not a white man. He's probably olive colored, just like Middle Eastern person. But really, that doesn't even matter. What matters is that he died for everybody. Black, white, brown, Chinese. He died for you. What about what about the people that you condemn? They're condemned already, the Bible says, if they don't believe in him. Why? Because they don't believe in the word of God. They're, they're, they're defying the purpose that God had for their life by living in depravity, doing things that harm them. Jesus knows what's best for people more than they know what's best for themselves. They're absolutely. Have you seen the statistics? Most uh, homosexual men, the average age that they die is 47 years old. So you think that's normal? Well, I wouldn't talk it up to Jesus. It's, it's because of their sin. It's because of it's because of the, the destruction that they do in their life. Now what? AIDS, STDs, suicide. These are all these are all coming from the demons that they have in their life. The sexual sin, the depravity that God warns us against. What makes them any different from you other than their sexual preference? The fact of the matter is. I'm no different than them because of my sin. My sin that I was living in would condemn me to hell just as much as theirs. But I've forsaken my sin. But wouldn't it being a sin just be a point of view and a perspective? No, because it's God's word. It's God's It's God's direction. But that, that would be your perspective. No, that's God's. It's not my opinion. If it was up to me, so no, if it was up to me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to go to hell. I wouldn't send them to hell. I'd send nobody to hell. I'd have, I'd have a different uh, outlook because my flesh corrupts me. But see, God is perfect. God is holy. God is a just God. If you are God, you do a better job than God No, I'm, I just told you because of my, because of my flesh, no. because of my flesh, I would have a different understanding. But you see, God is perfect and holy. I'm not perfect and holy. So I can't understand the deep mysteries of God. You see, but God requires justice. And breaking God's law, you're an offender against God. They don't have to. They could repent of their sins just like you can. See, uh, so, so, yeah, and they're, they're choosing to, to reject God. Murders will go to hell. All liars will go to hell. 
All liars will have their part in the lake of fire. All drunkards will go to hell. Even even the smallest little white lie would send you to hell. See, because God is perfect. God is holy. He requires perfection. Oh, I've done all those things, man. Except for homosexuality. But, I'm, but, but you see, the thing is, I've forsaken my sin. And I've put my trust in Jesus Christ. And now I live for Christ's glory. Not for my own will, but for His will. See, I've laid down my sin. So you live your life for someone else. So God, the one who created me, the one who knows what's better for me than I know for myself. Do you pray to Jesus or God? Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He Jesus is God. God. He's still God. It, it says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by Him. So God is just a man from the Middle East, bro. <laughs> well, you can laugh, but you won't laugh when you meet Him. Yeah. See, when you meet God, you're not going to be able to say, you're just a man from the Middle East. Because God, he, he, was a, 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 he was God, fully God and fully man. God's a man from the Middle East who I can meet. You will meet him when you stand in front of him on Judgment Day. And you could know him right now if you give your life to him. Instead of living your life for your sin, living your life for the things that fulfill your flesh, you need to fulfill the things that, that glorify God. And he can give you a new heart. He can give you a new heart that desires holiness and righteousness and you'll hate the, the things you once loved and you'll love the things that you hate and you'll love the things that god uh, uh loves and, and you'll hate the things that you that you continue on it if i were to start right now what would be my next step to acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of a savior to acknowledge that your sin has got you dragged down you keep sinning to try and mask away the pain but you're in pain man you're in pain and so you want to keep on sinning to cover it up and it might feel good for a season but, but when you wake up tomorrow you need to go and do more of it to drown out your pain whatever your sin may be and it's going to drag you down to hell You have, you have God's, you have God's, uh, you're made in the image of God, so you understand these things. You know that, you know that you're going to die one day, and that there's going to be something that, that's going to be after this. And you're going to have to stand in front of God and give an account for the way that you either lived or wasted your life. That's so just narrow and close-minded, though. But the Bible says that narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. That's correct. It is very narrow. It's very close-minded. Jesus was 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 very intolerant to any other way but his own way. There's no other way that could save you. There's no man that died for you. There's no religion that could save you. No, no nothing that you could do on your own. No good works can Just save you. Jesus. Only Jesus Christ. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me." Only Jesus Christ. to take away the sins of the world he came down he gave his life for you the least you could do is give your life for him see he was up on that cross gave his life for you he could have stayed in heaven instead of coming down to this filthy planet but he laid down his life for you that's what he did he laid down his life for you the just died for the unjust in order to reconcile sinners to turn to him to turn to god the Bible says he died for you that you might be saved. The Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent his son not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. You know why you're condemned if you don't believe in him? It's because he's the only way that God has provided for, for you, a sinner, to be pardoned of your sin. He's the only one that shed his blood for you. He's the only one that lived, lived the perfect, sinless life, the blameless, spotless Lamb of God. So if you don't believe in him, you won't be saved. When I say believe, I don't mean simple intellectual assent or mental belief. I mean that you surrender to him, that you trust in him, that you follow him. James 2 19 20 you believe that there's one God you do well the demons also believe and tremble but will thou know a vain man that faith without works is dead if you claim that faith in Jesus but you're living in sin claim that faith in Jesus but you're getting drunk you claim that faith in Jesus but you look at Paul 
carrying that faith in Jesus or you're going to these filthy concerts, the fact of the matter is you have a dead faith. According to James, you have a demonic faith. Amen. See, because at least the demons who believe that there's one God, at least they tremble before God. Sinners that continue in sin, they don't, they don't tremble before God.